Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to review different forms of governance. Remember, if you find value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet in the description down below. Now throughout this unit, we've been talking about different states. Remember, a state is a geographic area that has a permanent population, defined borders, a sovereign government, and is recognized by other states. Today we are going to focus on how power is distributed throughout a state. Traditionally, we can see power more concentrated at the national level or distributed throughout regional government. States that have their power concentrated with the national government are called a unitary state. The national government here creates the laws, policies, and systems for the entire state. Regional governments take on the role of carrying out policies that are created at the national level and have little to no power or influence over the decision-making process. Traditionally, unitary states are geographic smaller and often have a homogeneous population, such as a nation state. Unitary states can also have a strong sense of national identity and can quickly create and implement new laws and policies for the state. However, they may also not be able to address the needs of local communities, minority groups, and other day-to-day -day issues in a quick and efficient manner. Since the decision process is centered at the top and is not distributed throughout the state, we may also see the ideology of the dominant cultural group promoting throughout the society, with other cultural groups getting less recognition and protection. Now, on the other hand, we also have federal states. These states have power distributed between the national government and regional and local governments that exist within the state. This system is often used by states with a large geographic area, a high amount of diversity, or with states that have isolated populations. Oftentimes, multinational states will use this form of governance. States that use federalism will have certain powers specifically given to either the regional governments or the national government. However, there are areas where powers can overlap. Now, because power is shared between the national government and regional governments, we sometimes can have debates that can occur over who has the right or power to implement certain laws or policies. States that use federalism often can quickly react to localized issues, support the needs of minority groups, and create laws and policies that reflect the needs of a local population. However, federal states may also take longer to implement policy changes, have more inefficiencies, and have a greater likelihood of experiencing devolution. If we look at a map of the world today, we can see that both federal and unitary forms of governments are practiced around the world. Federal states, we can see, tend to have a more diverse population and larger geographic area, whereas unitary states tend to be geographically smaller and have more of a homogeneous population. Just remember when looking at how power is distributed throughout a state, unitary states have the power at the national level level, and federal states share the power between the national government and regional government. All right, now comes the time to practice. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet for more help with AP Human Geography. It's a great resource that'll help get you an A in your class and a five on the national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time online.